Imagine that you're on vacation strolling barefoot along the beach when suddenly you feel a sharp but familiar pain. You look down and see the impossible. It seems that you've stepped on a Lego brick. But how? Well, you may have just discovered a Lego brick from the Great Lego Spill. Let me explain. You see, the beaches of Cornwall, England are well known for their rustic charm and vibrant blue waters. But there's another thing that brings people flocking from all over the world to walk these shores. To figure out why, we need to go all the way back to 1997. On February 13th of 1997, the container ship Tokyo Express set out from Rotterdam in the Netherlands towards New York City. About 20 miles off the coast of Land's End in Cornwall, England, however, the ship was suddenly struck by a massive rogue wave. This wave caused the ship to violently rock from side to side, and during the commotion, a total of 62 shipping containers were lost to the deep, dark abyss. Now, one of these containers just so happened to contain nearly 5 million Lego bricks, marking the worst toy-related environmental disaster of all time. 5 million Lego bricks dumped into the ocean water, which is quite ironic since Lego bricks are made out of ABS plastic pellets, and those are created from petroleum. This shipping accident was practically an oil spill, but in a slightly different form. Fittingly enough though, the majority of the pieces that were lost to the ocean were destined to be used in the Aqua Zone and Pirates themes, which basically means that many of the pieces that were underwater were also underwater themed. In total, the ship lost 418,000 swimming flippers, 97,500 scuba tank pieces, 26,600 life jackets, 13,000 spear guns, and 4,200 octopus Lego pieces, along with seagrass bricks, cutlasses, and even the now rare green dragons. Of course, with 5 million Lego bricks in the ocean, it wasn't long before people started finding these pieces washing up on local beaches. Now, one of the most impressive parts of this story are the bricks themselves. Looking at these pieces, it's amazing how well they held up. The colors are still vivid, the shapes are still instantly recognizable, and very few show any serious damage at all. This is both a testament to LEGO's incredibly high quality, but also a pretty scary warning about the dangers of plastic pollution. If these still look good after all this time in the water, how long will they actually last? Well, people are still finding them almost daily, 25 years later after the incident. It seems that of the 5 million parts, about 3 million are estimated to be light enough to float, meaning that they've most likely been carried by the current from the site of the accident to the nearest point on land. However, it seems that they've made it much farther than that. Listen to this. One Facebook account has been tracking and mapping these Lego bricks as they've been reported all over the world. While the overwhelming majority have been found in and around Cornwall, England, they've also washed up some 300 miles away in Brighton on the other side of the country. But that's not all. The lost Lego bricks have also turned up in Wales, and in 2007, 10 years after the spill, an octopus was found on a beach in Ireland. Other finds have been reported in the Netherlands, Texas, and as far away as Melbourne, Australia. That's quite incredible to think about. The idea of something cast into the sea washing up on distant shores around the world really makes me rethink of the message in a bottle type situation that shipwreck survivors would cast into the water in hopes of a rescue. However, even more incredibly, this Lego spill disaster wasn't even the first time that this type of disaster had happened with toys. Back in 1992, 28,000 rubber ducks were lost in a spill in the northern Pacific Ocean between the US and China. Over the next 15 years, these rubber ducks began to appear in Alaska, then Seattle, California, and Hawaii. Eventually, they reached as far as Maine, and they've even been found along the beaches in the UK. So, since single Lego bricks and rubber ducks are small, light, and float, it's not surprising that they can travel so far, given enough time, of course. But what about something a lot bigger? In 2007 in the Netherlands, early morning beach walkers spotted something very unusual. Off in the distance and being battered by the waves, there was a large yellow figure that lay in the sand. Upon closer inspection, this turned out to be a massive 8 foot tall Lego minifigure. Or maybe this would technically be considered a max figure considering its size. <laughs> well, anyway, this extremely large Lego figure had a cryptic message written on the front which said, quote, no real than you are. On the back, there was simply a name, Ego Leonard. However, this wasn't the last time that a giant minifigure would appear. 
The next year, another eight-foot figure washed ashore in the UK. Then the beaches of Sarasota, Florida in 2011, and even just outside of Tokyo, Japan in 2014. People at these locations were understandably very confused. After all, when a mysterious Lego man washes up on the beach, there's bound to be some questions. And if the Lego figure happens to be eight feet tall, the questions are likely to be of the head-scratching variety. So where did these giant Lego figures come from? Were there more on the way? What did they mean? Well, sometimes mysteries aren't actually all that mysterious, and in this case, things were actually solved pretty quickly. A message posted on the Sarasota Visual Art website confirms that this minifigure was named Ego Leonard, and that he was created by Dutch guerrilla artist Leon Keir. It seems that Leon was in town for an art festival and brought his giant minifigure buddy that he called Ego along with him. Leon treated his giant minifigure creation as his best friend and consistently just referred to him as Ego. Are you putting together the pieces yet? Well, the phrase on the minifigure named Ego refers to whether a human's presence in this world is any more real than his minifigure character. Are we all just characters? Can anything have an ego or personality if we're creative enough? I guess that's something to think about. This same artist, Kier, was responsible for Ego's appearance back in 2007 in the Netherlands and would continue touring with him for the next several years. Kier seemed to really enjoy his minifigure buddy, and he even told a local newspaper that he simply helps out his large fiberglass friend, saying, quote, For years, I have been close friends with Ego. Together, we have made some amazing journeys. He asked me to make his website as I did. Kier made Ego his own website that now documents this giant minifigure's historic ocean journeys. Nonetheless, it seems that Ego really gets around. Aside from beaches, he's been spotted at concerts, festivals, and award shows all across the Netherlands. The last public sighting of Mr. Ego occurred in 2015, when he showed up floating on the Danube River in Austria. According to a local paper, he must have, quote, swam out to take part in the Linz Art Festival. Although forms of artwork like this are always up to viewer interpretation, this giant plastic figure washing up on beaches seems to also highlight the growing issues with plastic pollution in the ocean, and perhaps even refers to the plastic that was dumped into the ocean during the Great Lego Spill. For its part though, Lego has been making some really great strides towards reducing their own plastic use, which is no small feat for a company that is practically synonymous with plastic. Over the last few years, LEGO has begun experimenting with a range of new materials for its bricks, including recycled plastic bottles and sugarcane. In fact, more than 150 elements have been made from plant-based materials since 2018. And additionally, LEGO has also recently begun the switch to paper bags instead of plastic for packaging. If you enjoyed this video, you'll also enjoy one of these. Click on one and subscribe for more LEGO videos.